On this episode of Carnage, we're bringing back Turbo Taxi again. Man, these things have more comebacks than John Farnham. So here we are, back again with Turbo Taxi, the OG Carnage car. This is where it all started. This is the car that was dreamed up over a couple of uh, Suvlakis down there in Oakley one day. We're just like, all right, we're gonna do this show called Carnage. Well, I, we didn't even have a name. I came up with the name Carnage. And um, yeah, we're like, what would we do for our first car? Well, it's gotta be kind of something iconic, you know? It's like, what's iconic in Melbourne when it comes to cars? Well, Melbourne taxis are kind of iconic. They've always been yellow. They've always stood out. They've nearly always been Ford Falcons. I mean, yeah, you see some silver top, you know, Statesmans and stuff around, but, you know, the ye yellow Melbourne Falcon taxi is pretty much an icon. And we thought, well, what if we take a taxi and try and make it run fast on LPG? Now, the original idea was actually run 11s on LPG. Um, and then I thought, you know what, 11s, Seems kind of easy, it wasn't, but anyway, we'll get to that. But we thought maybe tens, tens on LPG in a taxi, you know, we turbocharge a taxi and you know, make it run tens on LPG, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? And it was cool, it's a cool idea and people love the idea and people have had a strong following for turbo taxi ever since. But it has certainly proved to be a lot harder than we intended. Um, tens on LPG is hard, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it and no one is doing it, okay? And to be honest, LPG, it's kind of a dead deal here in Australia. Well, certainly, yeah, well, it's always been popular here in Melbourne, in Victoria, but uh, the rest of Australia, it's being phased out. And now in Melbourne, it's getting phased out as well. No new servos are getting built with LPG in them. Uh, some places are actually pulling it out, going long distances like we did a trip with this car from Melbourne to Wellerbank going up via rural New South Wales and nearly didn't make it because there's not a lot of LPG out there. It's kind of a fact of life now that LPG is uh, kind of done and the government is not helping they're trying to phase it out they're trying to push natural gas out of homes like I don't know why I don't know why there's this big push against gas when we have so much of it as a country, we have a lot of gas in this country, but I'm kind of getting political now, so let's stay away from that. But it does, shows you the stupidity of the whole thing. You know, back in, again, back into politics, uh, um, back in the late, say, 2000s, they were, the government was paying people to put LPG on cars. And now we're pulling LPG out of cars. It's just, it's madness. I mean, that shows you the stupidity of our governments, but anyway. So anyway, here we are with the taxi. Last time we ran at the track, we had an overboost issue. It cooked the cylinder head, torched a great big hole through it. Um, and there's the hole in the gasket, you can see. Hurt there, hurt there. It wasn't a good result. Um, I wasn't kind of happy with that, but it is what it is. We are building a new motor for it and uh, that's going to be like forge rod, forge piston deal, strong as we can make it. But I don't want to sacrifice that engine to the LPG gods. I still want to run a 10 on LPG if we can do it. We have gone 11 zero, one. That close, all right? And it popped a motor going across the line, which was really annoying at the time as well. However, I figure, I have that engine there. I've done a clean up at home the other day and I pulled out a lot of old barrows from my house, brought them back here to the Carnage Workshop. And this engine here is the engine that came in Turbo Taxi. It had a rod knock when we bought the car. So we decided to not push on that engine. So what I'm gonna do is tear that engine down, do a little uh, Carnage rebuild on it. And we're gonna use probably these rods with some factory turbo pistons. It's gonna be a slap together job, but I've done those before and they've worked pretty well. So it's gonna be a bit of a slap together job. We're gonna put it in the car 
and try and run tens one last time on LPG and this will be it. Whether it does it or not, that'll be it. If it tortures the engine again, we're done with LPG. If it runs tens, we're done with LPG. It's either way, okay? This is its last chance of success with LPG. After that, we are going to put a petrol tank in it, run it on E85, put the new motor in it and go run nines and maybe even better, we'll see. But we've already bought a FG Falcon shell for parts and it has a full fuel system and stuff in it. So all that fuel system and fuel tank and stuff will be going into this car. But that's a later date thing, not too far later, mind you. But for the moment, for the purposes of this video, we're building this thing. I'm gonna throw some parts at it. I have most of the parts here. I've got brand new bearings there, brand new comedic gasket. I've got rods. Zane's finding me a set of old turbo pistons at the moment. This is gonna be a real carnage build. We're gonna slap it together, make it run, hopefully run tens. That'll happen in a later episode, but let's just get it running. Let's do that. This is all gonna happen really quick, so uh, let's uh, smash the rods and pistons out of it before we, uh, you know, smash the rods and pistons out of it. All right, ah. yucky. Now I've had the sump off this thing before, just when I first pulled it out of Turbo Taxi. Uh, I pulled the sump off to have a look in there just to see if I could see where the rod knock was. Couldn't really see it when it was very much in my early barra days, so I didn't really know much about what I was looking at. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go on a voyage of discovery. and we'll see what caused the rod knock in the first place. Hopefully the crank isn't stuffed, otherwise we'll have to dig up a crank. I got sick of struggling with short breaker bars. So I bought this bad boy. So the temptation would be to rebuild this with uh, gassy rods in it and stuff like that. I mean, that would be the true gassy style. However, the rod bolts on these are torque to yield. So reusing them is a bit of a problem. Uh, and when that's why I'm gonna use those rods because it's got ARP bolts in it and I can reuse those things. Plus if I we'll put turbo pistons on it, Turbo pistons have floating pins, so they'll go straight into those rods without a problem. These things have pressed pins. So, I mean, people will be like, oh, just run it, you know, don't even pull the rods out of it. Well, obviously this one has a rod knock, so that's not gonna be working. But the big problem is that the ring gaps are too tight in a, uh, a uh, factory gassy. So they're fine up to like, 20 pounds, 22, maybe even 24. When you start going 25, 26, ring gaps close up, they start breaking ring lands, it's all over. It's got some wear, but you know, it's not hammered by any means. So I'll have a quick squeeze at them, but I'm not gonna spend all day looking at these things. It's not even a gassy. This is an NA engine. That's what you get with taxi companies. So I mentioned before that this is the engine that came with the taxi, but the engine match numbers don't match up. It is not the numbers matching engine for the taxi. And 
So it's clear to me that at some point in its life, they have uh, broken the original engine and they've put an NA motor in it. So that's interesting, isn't it? Now I'm confused. There's been so many engines. Hmm, maybe that's the case. What happened to the original gas engine? We pulled it out of MPW, replaced it there. Oh, might ended up in the bin at MPW. Don't know. Hmm. Oh well, anyway, moving on. Just try and bear with me, because this has all happened a long time ago. So we bought an NA engine for 200 bucks. It came out of an FG XR6, but it was a NA engine. Young bloke was upgrading to a turbo engine, so we paid 200 bucks for a NA engine from him. And that was the, the first taxi motor, like the first modified taxi motor, I guess. That's the first one we put valve springs in. Uh, that was the first one that we ran, shit, we ran. Well, that's the one we did the Queensland trip in. So we drove it up to Queensland, ran 11.5 at Willowbank and drove it home. Um, the only reason we replaced it is because we hit the tree. So we had that incident where the taxi aquaplaned off the road um, during drag challenge into a tree and I had to rebuild the whole front of the taxi. And when I did that, the engine mounts were all broken, like the alloy engine mounts were all broken. So um, I thought, well, let's just replace the whole engine. And I think that's when we put, I think that's when we put the gas motor in it. God, I'm all confused now. It's all been so long and there's so much that's happened. Um, yeah. But maybe this is that NA engine that we paid 200 bucks for. So here's a comparison between the NA rod with the 1R part number and the, this is the gas slash turbo rod with the 3R part number. Oh, well, I mean, the turbo rods have got floating pins instead of pressed pins, but uh, the 3R has this same sort of thicker beam on the I-beam and, you know, a much better and stronger rod. So that's how you tell between an NA rod and piston and a, you can even feel it in the weight, and a gassy or turbo rod and piston. There's no point in keeping these NA rods and pistons in the bin. Crank looks mint. Original Ford bearings. And there we have it, one bare barrel block. I guess I um, need to break out the old hone and run a hone through it, see how she looks. More mess.
not looking too bad, but uh, the old honing stones are a bit worn. And uh, you know, I've used them on quite a few engines. Let's face it, I did the 2J and I've done several barrows and the 1UZ. Um, all those have copped the old uh, garage hone. But yeah, maybe I need to go buy a new set, slip over to uh, the old super cheap, grab a new set of honing stones and just do one last pass through each cylinder. Just give it a nice clean cross hatch. It's not too bad but I think we can do better. Yeah, I'll just go and grab a new set of honing stones and we'll do it one last pass and we'll call that done. Then we'll have to clean up the deck. Then we can start reassembly. Yep, it's all happening that quick. Go to the dip -roo. Right, so we've got some new stones here. I'll just give them a quick whiz. See how we go. So now that we've honed the bores, we're going to clean the deck surface. I'm going to give it a bit of a heavy scrape over to start off with. And then we'll go finer and finer and then we'll probably use some scotch bright as well. And I've got a stone over there just to rub over the deck. Just to make sure we get the rest off. But yeah, this is uh, budget engine building 101. <laughs> All right, so the block surface is looking pretty clean. It's not pristine. It's not like it's been hot tanked or anything and it hasn't been officially decked, but you know, I've put the stone over it. It's looking not too bad. This is probably the same condition as that 2JZ I put together for the troll bow that time that went mid nines. So yeah, it'll be fine. Um, so I'm just gonna finish, well, I've got to clean the block I've done most of the cleaning, but yeah, cleaned it up a bit more. Um, I'm also going to duck down to max performance. Boys might have some parts for me, so I'll go down, see what they've got. Be back in a sec. Well, I come bearing pistons. So we have some genuine Turbo Falcon pistons here, courtesy of max performance. These are all second handies. Uh, we have, we have pistons, we have pins, we have no clips. So I've got to find some sir clips, some C clips. They're definitely second hand, but they're in good condition. Bit of carbon. That's all right. Bit in carbon never hurt anyone. Aren't we all made of carbon? Cool. All right. Well, we've got six of those. I might uh, see if we can find some pins. And what else do we need? Some rings. We need rings as well. All right, pins and rings. Let me make some calls. Right, well, I made some calls and made a trip down to Precision, got myself some rings, got a water pump, got some uh, C-clips So for the pistons. So we've pretty much got everything I need to put this bottom end together. I've got bearings here that I had from before that were going to be for the new motor. I've got the ARP studs from the old motor sitting there as well. So, And I've got a committed gasket. So i pretty much got everything I need to put this back together. So I figure, let's flip it upside down, clean up this crank. But the crank looks nice. The crank looks in perfect condition. So we'll uh, give it a wipe over. I reckon uh, it's 
pretty much time to start throwing this thing back together. Because this engine's going together for a good time and not a long time, I'm not even going to bother with the, uh, the wrong way around, with the bearing clearances. So if I put the crank on and it spins smoothly, I'm going to call that job done. Some people will be horrified by that, but I'm just I'm not going to spend a full day measuring everything. So here's the annoying part on building barrows. You can't put the, uh, the girdle on, the girdle tray on at this point because you still got to do rods and pistons, but you can't do rods and pistons without the crank in it. Oops. But you also can't fully bolt the crank in without the girdle. It's a vicious circle. But anyway. Right, that one, that one, I think that one goes there, that one goes there. Right. Now the test. Spins freely. That is good. All right. Next up, we're going to do ring gaps. Uh, we're going to do pistons and rods together and then rods and pistons in the engine. Alrighty, let's do that. So I'm definitely going to be measuring uh, ring gap because it is critical. I mean, bearing gap is critical as well, but the crank spins, it's fine. Ring gap though, destroys more pistons than anything, especially with uh, barras because they are very tight from the factory. It's just a uh, fact of life. So, you know, yeah, all you need is those rings to butt and it'll just break the ring lands and destroy the piston very quickly. So. We don't want that to happen, so I'm going to check the ring gaps. Being Hastings rings, I reckon they're going to be pretty much right out of the box because these tend to be a bit loose from my experience. Uh, but uh, we will see. All right, time to measure. Okay, so this one's measuring up at about 19 thou, which is just a fraction too tight for what I want. 
I could probably send it like that, but you know, we're gonna be feeding it at least 25 pounds of boost. So I think uh, just a couple extra sour gap is good insurance. Okay, that's good. Let's do another five like that. So we've gapped all our rings. We actually got lucky with some of them. Some of them just came up perfect out of the box. So for interest sake, I've gone 22 thou on the top ring, 24 thou on the bottom ring. I don't care if you don't agree with those numbers. They're the numbers I like. I like six thou of clearance per inch of bore size on the top ring and slightly bigger on the, uh, the second ring. Certainly hasn't hurt me so far, but anyway. That's what we've done. Uh, pistons that Zane has given me are a little bit dirty, so I'm just gonna give them a bit of a, um, a flush and we'll clean them up. And then we'll get them on our rods, get the rings on and get them into the engine. So it's all happening. Okay, now it is time to put rods on pistons. So we're just using a factory turbo piston. They are a floating pin, and we're just gonna use these precision rods that we've used in one of our barrows before. Now, these go into the block with the little divot at the front of the engine. So that's the, basically goes that way for your valve reliefs. Pretty simple, I'm just gonna put clips all in one side of each piston so then I can uh, oil up the pin and slide the pin through the rod into the piston and then we can clip the other side so let's start off by putting clips in all one side of the piston. you are going to run tens. Right, so we got that one done, but I don't think you guys wanna sit there and watch me do the rest of them. So we're coming up on the weekend. I'm gonna keep banging away on these. And when you guys come back and join me on Monday, we should be ready to put these into that block. So have a great weekend and we will catch you then.